season. You're listening to Arkansas Preps Weekly. A natural state sports. Your top source for the biggest news in high school sports across Arkansas. Here we go, here we go. Man, first try. Let's try this again. All right. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get this out of the way. So uh, the infamous forgetting to unmute my mic that I am so well known for. Haven't done it in a few shows, but that being said, welcome into episode number 32. Now that you can hear me of Arkansas Preps, Preps Weekly here on the Natural State Sports Network. Alongside the man, the myth, the legend, Kevin Bohannon, also known as the baseball guru, who also does football stuff and is pretty dang good at it in his own right. My name is Kyle Sutherland and we appreciate you tuning in. It is officially the halfway point of the 2024 football season, believe it or not. I'm going to talk about some of the conference matchups that we had last week. It was, Kevin, I know it was a really rough week for many of our um, fellow SEC country peeps in the Southeast region. I know Georgia, Florida, North Carolina, even into Tennessee, uh, had a really tough uh, outing with the the Hurricanes, and so we want to wish the best to them. And, of course, in Arkansas, we got some of the remnants of that, more so the eastern part of the state. But when I went sh- showed up at Cabot for the, uh, for the Little Rock Christian game that we called on 103.7 The Buzz Friday, it was pretty submerged for the most part, but drained out pretty quickly, and we ended up having a pretty good football game that we'll talk about here in a second. Yeah, and, you know, prayers, thoughts, you know, go out to everybody that was impacted. There were a couple of people that I work with with my day job uh, that were displaced by that. So, you know, getting five-gallon buckets and throwing water out of the basement, you know, kitchens being destroyed. It's just – it's a tough deal um, that, you know, yeah, we've had to deal with it with, you know, tornadoes and things like that. So it just brings back – uh, the thought that, you know, humanity is real and Mother Nature is, is also real. So thoughts and prayers out. Uh, yeah, it was a weird night on Friday night with, you know, some parts of the state saw a lot of rain, saw some none. And you, you could really tell looking at the scores, you know, you get a 6-0 score down at Hampton or, you know, 78-72 where it didn't rain. It doesn't matter. So. Uh, yeah, I'm glad we got through it. First conference week is always something that you look forward to. Teams getting off on a hot start, uh, getting that one and zero mark is really big towards you know if you're playing going into November. And as we expected, the Little Rock Christian Cabot game, uh, we call coming into that one that was certainly the game of the week in the in the seven A Central and probably the seven A overall. And before we get to that, we'll go through a couple of scores here. So Bentonville they get their first win of the season due to the Tigers fifty. 50- Five to twenty-one over Springdale Harbor. Rogers thirty-five to seven over Fort Smith Northside. Conway fifty-six to twenty-two over Little Rock Southwest. Bryant sixty-two to thirteen over Little Rock Central. Then Fayetteville forty-nine to twenty-one. The Purple Dogs they rebound over now or I guess still winless uh, Bentonville West. Bentonville West, uh, as we talked about last week, don't think that they are what their record. I mean, I know that what was that Bill Parcells that said you are what your record is. Yeah, I think that's probably an exception right there, just with the schedule that they played. But the Wolverines still hunting their first win. Meanwhile, Springdale, four and 48 to twenty win over Rogers Heritage. So the Red Dogs are four and I don't know when the last time that happened, but it, it's been a while. Yeah. Then uh, Pulaski Academy, forty-seven to nothing over North Little Rock. And Kevin, it's crazy to me. I know North Little Rock really since about the 21-22 season, they've just, for what for multiple reasons, whether it be transfers or whatever the case may be, they've just taken more and more steps back. And, and this was a tough performance from them. 47 to nothing did the Bruins win, and the Bruins forced six turnovers, five of those interceptions, and then held North Little Rock to two first downs. And I don't know if this is a typo, but I got that they held them to 16 total yards, which is – Man, that's that's pretty wild. Brandon Cobb with another big night, five t- five passing touchdowns, then had another one on the ground. Brandon's had a booming Not start. Yeah, man, I mean, just a huge start for the Bruins this year. So, uh, Pulaski Academy, they win their opening seven A Central game of all their inaugural one. As does their arch rival Little Rock Christian. The Warriors were on the road against Cabot. They come back to beat the Panthers twenty eight to twenty four for their first ever. 7A Central victory. It was 
kind of a strange game as as you as we would have expected, it's Kevin. Like you said, it was pretty wet there, and and ten to seven, Cabot led at the half, and penalties, the run game, that was pretty much the story. Well, Kemp Keller of the Little Rock Christian quarterback, he really got the passing attack going for the Warriors in the second half. He hit Pete Greenwood for what ended up being the game winning touchdown for with thirty four seconds remaining, but massive mat it's always i mean you could go ahead and say that about any team that won last week getting that one and oh start in conference play is huge but it's especially big for little rock christian because they go to bryant next week or i can't or bryant maybe comes to, either way they play bryant yeah so that's bryant. yeah they host bryant so big time win there to start one and oh so that way you don't have to make that game up against uh you know a bryant or whatever you're at least out ahead a little bit so uh, this game, again, kind of what we expected, a lot of running, but really in that second half, Kemp Keller, I think, had his coming out party. He's had a good season up to this point, but to have that comeback win on the road in your first ever 7-8 game is big. Yeah, and that's that was huge for, for Keller, you know, coming out of the shadow of Walker White, who's now at Auburn. You know, how, how are the offense going to look? You know, you got Jackson Ward back there who got a lot of experience last year, you know, running the ball. We knew this was going to be a very physical game. You know, as we're, you know, listening to the game, you guys did a great job as always. I'm just like thinking, okay, how is Cabot going to, you know, grind it out right here? Are they going to be able to do it with Keegan Vest? Uh, but, you know, Little Rock Christian just, you know, things just kind of bounce their way, and that's what you need sometimes in these, these tight games. Uh, we talked about the 7A Central and how tough it was going to be among the five, top five teams. Bryant Conway, and then you had that second group of Little Rock Christian, Plasky Academy, and Cabot. To be honest with you, Plasky Academy is playing better than the other three, the other two right now in terms of Little Rock Christian and Cabot. Um, I think PA is comfortably in that three spot, which you know could turn into a two, possibly a one. You know, depending on what how they do against Bryant Conway. So there's there's no weeks off. Yeah, you're gonna have your Central, your North Little Rock, and Southwest games, and and we talked about it last week with Little Rock Central getting the first win over Rogers Heritage. How would they come out with it? Would they play close with Bryant for a little while? It was not close. Uh, when I saw the score 62-14, it was just like, wow, I didn't expect that. Uh, Bryant just kind of flexed their muscle a little bit. And Bentonville West, I mean, yeah, we hope they might keep it 14-21, but, yeah, another 28-point win. By Fayetteville, uh, Purple Dogs just look really good right now, that offense. Uh, Garrett Odom can do it with his legs. You know, of course, he can do it with his arm because he has so many weapons, whether it be Mattingly, Battles, Delmar. Uh, it's just a tough offense. It, we talk about when we get those really good teams, like I said last week, when they play Texas High, if they play a Conway or a Bryant, it's defenses just can't keep up with offenses now just because of how the game is skewed towards the offenses that you're just going to have these shootouts. We've seen it with Little Rock Christian and PA in the past when they were in 5A and 6A. So um, about like we thought it would be in Class 7A starting this week. I think the Central is really interesting because you've got Little Rock Christian playing Bryant this week, then PA, I believe, plays Bryant the ne in week six. So this back half, I know that all eyes, and, and naturally so, are going to be on week that Week 10, 10 matchup, certainly, because that's who the top dogs have been, and Bryant has, has come out on top of that for really about the past decade. But – then PA and Little Rock Christian, they they close out the year in week uh, or either week nine or week ten. So this back half is going to be extra interesting. And still, even though Cabot is really struggling throwing the football right now, if Keegan Vest stays healthy, he really and I said this on the broadcast, both RJ and I did multiple times. Even though Cabot runs a you know a three or four wide now, not that dead T anymore. Keegan Vest reminds you of those old school backs. Absolutely. That Cabot had. Both did, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's unfortunate, you know, Cooper's out for this year, but I, I would be very curious to know what Keegan's yards after contact because he was just dragging people. Yeah. Tough runner. And he, he's that typical off guard, off tackle fullback that Mike Malham used to have. Brian Jones in 99 and 2000 running for 2,100 yards, whatever it was. Uh, just that type of guy, really physical, really strong. So, you know, Cabot, man, it's been like snake, but they've been right there. You know, they got over the hump against Bentonville West, won that game in overtime, but I thought I thought they had it on Friday night, honestly. They've been, they've been playing really well. 
And then on down to class 6A, if I can, if this will load for me. Okay, here we go. Uh, so Marion, they win 45 to 7 over Sylvan Hill. Sylvan Hill still uh, looking for their first win. I believe, well, yeah, 2022 was the last time uh, that Sylvan Hills won a football game at the end of that season. Catholic 26 to 6 over El Dorado. Benton in a weird game with Jonesboro. The Panthers emerged victorious 48 to 35, but Benton. They led 14 to nothing at half, and then just a shootout transpired in the second half, and they ended up running away with it. Let's talk about, Kevin, those Mountain Home Bombers for a second here. So 4-0 and for the first time since 1986. Let's, I always like it when people talk about when it's been a long time since something happened. They talk about the top song, the who the president was. You know, I, I bet there's a lot of kids today that don't even know who Ronald Reagan is. Of course, Ronald Reagan, uh, he got out of office right before I was born. But the top Billboard 100 song, Stuck With You by Huey Lewis and the News. And, of course, no surprise in 1986, the, the number one movie was Top Gun. I think that's no surprise by anybody whatsoever. That's still an extremely popular movie, both the first and second one. But big time win by the Mountain Home Bombers, 50 to 35 over Fort Smith Southside and they play Shiloh at home on Friday. And we talked about last week how this was really that game that was probably going to decide right now who was that fifth best team, or at least in the conversation for the top five teams in the 6A yeah. West. The Bombers really uh, just on a roll right now. Jacob Shinn with 44 carries for 236 yards and five touchdowns. Uh, there was a few big-time performers that the, the Bombers did have, but – Man, I'll tell you, that that stadium is going to be rocking this week. Now, I know we'll get into the Greenwood-Shiloh uh, game here in a second, but uh, this is really about the time. Of course, you look at their schedules over the past few years, and, and that meat of the season was right there between about weeks four through six, seven, and they've got this big one with Shiloh this week, and I think Greenwood is week nine. So, man, the Bombers are in a really good position right now. Community sport has always been there, but just the the way that they are feeling right now, uh, and just also too, they took care of business in this one. Not to say that Southside didn't give them a push, but you think about that was a pretty emotional game. Yeah, uh, Shiloh and Greenwood had last week. So, man, I'll tell you, it is it is a fun time to be a bomber right now. I know you think thinking about compared to where they were, it is a lot of fun there in Mountain Home right now. Absolutely, and you know a lot of people are like. Well, is Mountain Home a sleeper? I mean, you and I have been talking about them for seven weeks now. They were going to be really good. Now, Kyle, if they win this week, that puts them in a good position to be that two seed and get that all-important buy in Class 6A. Uh, you know, you take care of business against Southside. And, and, and no offense to Lake Hamilton. Lake Hamilton's playing really well, too. They're, they're on my list right here today, the, you know, that 6A West is a lot more competitive than what we thought it would be at the first of the year. What a lot more competitive than what a lot of people thought it would be. They were like, okay, it's just going to be shallow and Greenwood and then everybody else can just work themselves out. That's not true. Fort Smith Southside, of course, came out hot this year, Blake Forrest current at quarterback, but Mountain Home just ran through them on Friday, put up 50 points. Um, and it, as you look forward to this week with shallow Christian coming to Mountain Home, yeah, it's going to be a lot of blue and a lot of gold on both sides. But how does Shiloh Christian stop Mountain Home? Little Rock Christian, you know, you know, been able to run on Shiloh. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens, you know, with that uh, Shiloh defense. They they played Greenwood close. I know Kane Archer was out, but, you know, they played a really good ball game. It was kind of wet over there. 28-17, Greenwood ended up pulling away after it being 14-14, then 17-14. Uh, the Bulldogs just, you know, found a way to win in that one. So – uh, a lot of, and you're talking about 1986, the, the challenger in, in January that year. So I remember it very well. I was in kindergarten. I'm dating myself a little bit. Yes, I know. But I remember 1986 very well. Uh, so I'm really happy for Coach Steve Airy and the Bombers up there. I always enjoy uh, getting to see the updates by our man, Neil Denton. Uh, you know, anytime he puts out stats, they just, they can turn, hand the ball over. And Chenoweth coming out this past weekend, just they just really put it on his back and said, "Okay, big boy, we'll ride you." And you know, two thirty four and four later, they, they're looking at a fifteen point win. And the other game that we've referenced uh, in the six A West from last week, Greenwood comes out on top of Shiloh. I believe that is Greenwood's seventeenth consecutive win dating back to last. It's sixteen or seventeen. I think it's seventeen. 
Uh, so they've got the, I guess, the now the longest streak along with Boonville. Uh, but so they get past Shiloh, 28 to 17. It's 14 to 14 at half. And then the Bulldogs defense really just stepped up there. And I believe, I guess, Shiloh had a, a field goal. Uh, for the remainder of the game. Kane Archer, as you said, he was knocked out, but still had a really good game when he was in. 19-26 to 26 for 177 yards, two scores. Cooper got Goodwin came in in relief, played a good night. He did throw two interceptions, but was 7-10 passing and, and then had a touchdown. Grant Carnes doing Grant Carnes things. Seven receptions for 110 yards and two scores. So, you know, going back to this, Kevin, I think the biggest question is obviously Shiloh. The, going back to this week's game with with Shiloh and and Mountain Home, Shiloh is Shiloh, but an emotional game like this and one that they just put so much into and having you know a week to basically rest on that. That's where I, I'm not predicting winners or anything, but that's where you probably do give the advantage to Mountain Home because even though that was a very high scoring game that they had with Southside. There was a lot put into it. Obviously, a lot of hype going into this Shiloh and Greenwood game since these are two of the favorites in Class 6A coming into the year. So I think that's probably the one thing that I'm going to be looking at. If Mountain Home really comes out and jumps on Shiloh early, then that's when I really think they're going to have that advantage. I agree. And, you know, that's one of the things that you have these games like this. And it's like Shiloh's already been through – two of these already you know the little rock christian game was 44 to 40 the uh, lincoln christian game those two teams have gone back and forth already this year and it's you know but that's what they expect you know any run of the mill team would be like man it's just a lot they just pound on you mentally every week coming out on the wrong side of it versus the right side how that propels you into next week that's just a part of the game within the game in high school football that i love you know we had, you know, I remember in 2014 at Sylvan Hills, we go three and zero when we're running through everybody. Our first conference game was at Helena West Helena, and we lose, and we lose, not expected to. I think it was 28 to 19, 26 19, some you know off the wall score. I mean, we had just you know been beat down and had to bounce back, and that was when Little Rock Christian was in the conference, PA was in the conference. That 5A Central was tough back then. And, you know, the kids responded well. These kids are resilient. And that's one thing that you want to look at that I don't think Shiloh will have a, a problem bouncing back. It's just the momentum is on Mountain Home side right now. And that's it, it's tricky at this point of year. Like you said, those weeks four through seven, it's always really important that you play well during that because that sets you up for the long haul going into November. And on down to Class 5A, Pine Bluff gets their first win of the season, 15 to nothing over Jacksonville. Moralton wins a shootout in a crucial game with Greenbrier for the 5A West race, 45 to 42. Also in the 5A West, Farmington hammers P Ridge, 44 to 7. Harding Academy over in the East, they get their first win of the season over Green County Tech, 35. I'm sorry, second win of the season. They win their 5A opener. 35 in their first ever 5A game, 35 to 14 over GCT. Valley View 49 to nothing big over Paragold in a matchup of undefeateds. Then Hot Springs hung with Parkview briefly in the first half some at the Patriots. They ended up running away with a 52 to 7 triumph. Uh, before we'll also get to uh, Lakeside and Camden Fairview in a second, but want to touch on Maumel. Um, there's obviously a lot of questions about the Hornets right now following a 22 to nothing loss to BB. And Kevin, I'll go ahead and say this. Now, BB is one that that we can certainly expect to be a sleeper, even before the season. When when Justin Bigham, when he's referred to a genius, uh, and I've said this many times, by Neil Evans, who Harding Academy played uh, Gentry, I think it was in the first round of the playoffs last year. And Justin Bigham is certainly one of the up-and-coming coaches. He's done a great job at BB thus far, did some good things at Gentry. So I'm not unbelievably shocked. And, and BB does have some talent. I'm not super shocked that Maumel lost this game. But Maumel, with a team that, that, that is that talented, I mean, getting shut out under any circumstance to me, I mean, I think they'll be the first to probably tell you, is not acceptable. Now, I think what probably is going on at Maumelle right now, and Coach Moppin, if you've watched the um, the high school hard knocks that they've been doing on Maumelle, and so these are Coach Moppin's, I'm paraphrasing words, not mine. Maybe some of the kids are more worried about impressions on Instagram or social media. 
whatever the case may be, maybe it's that there's, you know, a lot of new faces. They're still trying to gel, which this is about that time when they should be gelling. I don't really know what it is. And frankly, that's not any of my business. But from what we have seen, I think that there are a lot of problems that are fixable uh, because look, they're loaded. I mean, what is it? 20, they got over 25 transfers or something like that. And many of them are being looked at by colleges. I think this is really just a wake up call for them where somebody, whether it's a senior and they're a very young team, so maybe it'll be a junior or somebody else where somebody just really needs to get a hold of those guys and say, Hey, look, we've got the back half of the season because they've got Pond Bluff this week. And then I feel like they've got a favorable slate until they play Robinson towards the end of the season. I think that's week 10. Yeah. So that's my whole thing with Mall Mel is I know that many are like, okay, they had all this hype going into the season. What's going on? I think that really just somebody besides the coaching staff needs to really step up and take a leadership position because I think that's what they're clearly lacking really in the in the big picture right now. And who's that going to be, Kyle? That's that's the question. You know, Andrew Bjork, you know, had a good year at quarterback last year. He's really kind of been used. He was suspended for a week. Um, is he going to play running back? They got a sophomore and Levi Warrior. Is he going to be the guy? And you can just tell. And and remember, and I'm going to say this: college teams that have really gone to the portal and really flipped rosters every year, those kids are a little bit more mature. They you know they've been through a lot of things. They they have media training. They have you know, instances to where they have gone through stuff in high school and then their first or second stop at a school to where they can handle stuff. That's one of the things that coaches are looking for. And I can re reference Dave Van Horn on this. He's looking for high character guys that can be good in the locker room. That, that contributes to the overall chemistry of a team. When you have a lot of different alpha males in the same vicinity, it always doesn't work out the best. You know, you go back to the 2004 Los Angeles Lakers when you have Kobe, Shaq, Carl Malone, Gary Payton. You know, then you have the big three with LeBron, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade. You've always had these teams that are these super teams and they're put together. Well, how are, how are they going to work out? Are they going to mesh? Are they going to be good? And now you're starting to see it at the high school level. And yeah, that there's parts of it that are good. The school choice thing is what it is, you know. Schools have been doing it for a long time. They've been going and poaching kids. It's just been under the, the radar, of, and they've done it legally. By the AAA standards, they've done it legally. So who is going to step up? Is it going to be an, in, an incoming guy? Is it going to be uh, the running back that they got from CAC that had 186 tackles last year as a free safety who had 300 yards the first two games? Is it going to be – Andrew Bjork, is it going to be, you know, one of the linemen that's being looked at by power four schools that's got multiple offers is so that's who they have to rely on. Is it going to be an incomer or they can't call them incomers anymore because they're a part of Mall mill and that's, they got to figure out, are they going to gel as a team or is the season going to be a wash? Did Parkview actually break them? Is, is that because they had looked forward to it and it was going to be such a hyped up game you know, two teams from Class 5A coming into it that are going to be state title contenders, and then 51-6 to six later, then you're getting beat by BB, who's an up-and-coming school with an up-and-coming coach. Now you're not just playing for a conference title. You're playing for your playoff life at this point, going into a Pine Bluff game where they have something to prove. And it's just a matter of are they going to allow the season to go off the rails or not? That's it. That is. That's it right there is I think that – Probably if I'm if I'm the coaching staff, that's probably the first thing that I'm saying uh, today. So as we record on this Monday, you know, you're in practice, and then that's the thing is is who's going to really step up? And and sometimes it's not fun stepping up. I've been in those leadership. You know, I was very fortunate, um, I, and I was not a good player at all. I was more way more work ethic than I was anything. And you know, I was a team captain my senior year, and that was kind of we had to have some some not so fun conversations uh with our guys sometimes and i think that's kind of you know where they're at right now it's not over for mom l there's still plenty of time um now it's it is running like you said i mean with with robinson in that conference with bb really trying to make some noise yeah you're it, the clock is kind of starting to tick now that we're getting into the back half of the season but certainly not the end uh here i know that there's plenty that have written them off but there is still time but in the 5a south so it's really interesting, Kevin. I didn't, um, 
I foolishly forgot to put down the young man's name that started at uh, at quarterback for Parkview the other night in place of, of Quentin. But big night for him. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. have to find that somewhere. But uh, so you know, with that was Parkview was that was the question with them is were they bunting gonna, bunting bunting yeah, yeah 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 I think he's a junior. So you know that everybody is going to give Parkview their best bet, and that's the question with them. And I think Brad Bolding had to have a sit down with his guys, and he did during the Maumel game. And it's like, okay, really give them the, and I'm sure there were a few more colorful words, but how bad do you really want this? Let's stop messing around. Let's really go take care of business. And I think that's kind of what they had to do with hot springs. And a big part of that is just, again, because they're going to get everybody's best effort, but I'll tell you, I'm really liking um, what I'm seeing from, from hot spring. We knew hot springs lakeside and Camden Fairview. were going to be some of the upper echelon teams, not only in the five a South, but class five a overall, and boy, they had a great game, great finish the other night. Lakeside comes out with a 43 to 6 victory and a, you know, obviously a lot of offense. Wally Walcott was 17 of 21 passing for 254 yards and four touchdowns. Grady Omen with another big game, 213 yards and two touchdowns. And then also Ryan Ballard, wide receiver, six catches, 150 yards and a score. So if you're lakeside, right, obviously there's no such thing as as cruising. There's no and there's no such thing as easy because anybody can get you on any week, especially in this conference. But this right here is where they're showing or where they are reaping the rewards of playing a really tough schedule. This team, I'm not even though they they had a, a great showing last year. Uh, you look at the Robinson game from a couple of weeks ago. You look at this game. I'm not I'm not saying it couldn't happen, but I'm not a hundred percent sure that they would have continued to compete or been able to just because of the, uh, you know, just again, the, the talents of both of those teams. But again, Lakeside just continues to prove time in and time out, week in and week out, that it really doesn't matter how much they lost last year. They're just out here to continue proving something week by week. And now they get this victory. And again, there's no such thing as cruising, but they do have a pretty favorable slate on their way to play in Parkview and uh, what is that week nine that yeah. Lakeside plays them and then Camden Fairview plays them in week 10. So uh, that's where this conference is really going to come down to those three teams, Parkview, Lakeside and Camden Fairview and Lakeside has a leg up right now. Yeah. Coach, Coach Rock, well, has done a really good job of having those kids playing where their feet are. And that's a phrase that I've heard a lot of coaches use. I've used it myself. And it's, it's really about not looking to the past or looking ahead, but taking care of business and what you have going on right now. They had, when you and I talked about this two or three weeks ago, how, how is Lakeside going to look with two huge road games? You know, they had Robinson, then they had an off week. They had time to regroup and recoup and go out and get ready for a Camden Fairview team that had, had you know, one of the top offenses in the state with Junior Atkins, you know, over 300 yards a game, double digit in touchdowns. So, you know, that was a, a really key thing. So they come out, Gray Owen, you know, he's, he's got more touchdowns than I picked games correctly this year, you know, double digits. He's up towards 14, 15 on the year. So I'm really excited. They got Magnolia coming into town now, who is going to be a really good test. Adam Kirby's team has played really good this year. Uh, running the ball really well. They got multiple guys back there. So it's it's one of those things that Coach Rock has to get his, okay, it's a great win, you know, riding a high, but now that's over with. Let's look ahead to Magnolia and play where our feet are. Emmanuel Bunting was uh, the quarterback for Parkview that took him in, and he had a great game, four touchdowns. Yeah, 334 yeah. and four. Yeah, he, he had more yards passing that game than Quentin Murphy had had in the pre previous three. So, I, I thought I mean, that that was, was the case, yeah, because I know uh, yeah. at Maumel, I believe Quentin had about 170 or so. And then, yeah, of course, I think you it was know, 312 going into that game, and Bunning had 334 on Friday night, which was huge for them. So you got to think that, I mean, that's – and I'm not saying that anybody's job is up for grabs or anything, but you got to think that they're probably going to throw some packages in with him, maybe yeah. more so. Mur Murphy's an ball. athlete after all. Absolutely. You know, he's – going to Arkansas as an athlete. So, you know, you got to look at yourself and say, okay, what gives us the best chance to win? I'll go back to when I played high school. We had a quarterback that was a senior, Chris Daniels. Chris was 6'2", 215. At the time, I was six foot 190, and Chris was a lot faster than me. He was a 4'5 versus a 4'8", running a triple option offense. So, 
the way it worked out was I slid in a quarterback. They slid Chris to running back. I could still read and run the option just like anybody else. Chris was the athlete. It just gave us more weapons out there, and I could see, you know, something like that happen where you allow Murphy to get more touches. You know, it, there's always a the thing is you want your athletes and your guys to have your have their hand on the ball as much as possible. So if that, you know, opens up some scenarios, imagine having Murphy, Robinson, and El and Forte, or yeah, out there, all, all three of them with Bunning having options to go to all three of them. Tough to cover. Absolutely, no doubt about that. Then on down to class four, you're going to have a, we'll talk about the basketball finish, but also wanted to kind of dig in a little bit into this class. Cause I think it's maybe a, a quite a bit deeper than we expected it to be. It is, but yeah. Starting off Lone Oak 35 to nothing over four city. Congratulations to Clay Bimberg on his first win, win as a head coach. Huge big win. time. I mean, that's, that is big. I mean, four city, I know they're winless, but they, they've got some athletes. They're, they're a pretty solid team. Southside survives a low scoring in one of the games in muddy conditions. Yeah. A low scoring 10 to 7 victory over Pocahontas. Mills 49 to nothing over Bald Knob. Those Heber Springs Panthers, they kick a game winning field goal to beat CAC at Mustang Mountain. Clinton, they are 4 0, are the Yellow Jackets Ooh. falling a 56 to 24 win over Lamar. Kevin, they continue to run the football well. Ryland Jones, 196 yards, two touchdowns. Zach Hunt Gonzalez. 167 yards and two scores. And then Brody Dufresne was a perfect four of four with two passing touchdowns. They got a really big and really good offensive line that have paved the way for a lot of success and definitely a team to continue watching. Also, the Mina Bearcats, who I believe are four and oh for the first time since 2014. That's right. Um, yep. That's yeah, that was the year they went to the state championship game, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe yeah. or they made a deep run. The deep but, run, yeah. Yeah, four and oh for the first time since 2014. They beat Pottsville 33 to 14. Grab it 62 to 24 over Lincoln. Elkins, the 4A1 favorite, 45 to 20 over Gentry. And then Helena is quietly undefeated. I believe they are 4 0 now. Um, I, I didn't quite have the, the updated record, but I believe they are 4 1. They edged Stuttgart 18 to 17. Warren 36 to 22 over DeWitt. Star City remains undefeated. At following a 46 to nothing win over Cross It. And then also in the 4A8, Monticello 35 to 32. They survive Hamburg, Arkadelphia 42 to 12 over Nashville. Huge performance by the sophomore quarterback, Bryston McCoy, 24 of 37, 356 yards and four touchdowns. And then last but not least, Boxite survives Fountain Lake 78 to 72 in a basketball esque finish. The Miners, Kevin, had 654 total yards. 557 of those were on the ground. Eli Perry and his return at quarterback passed for 97, rushed for 174. Oklahoma commit Marcus Wimberly, 234 yards rushing, 51 receiving, and Caden Metzger, 162 yards rushing. And also, uh, Coach Perry, when he sent me these, he, he wanted to give a shout-out to Ryan Hoskins, who had eight tackles and also an interception while playing with a cast on his hand. So – uh wow i'm 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 just exhausted that that's kind of like last week talking about the uh or i guess maybe two a couple of weeks ago when pa and west monroe yeah. trying to dissect that game but uh i was talking with tommy giller in the other night uh, right around this the time that this game finished and when he was at fountain lake i don't have the score in front of me but i think he said that 88 they, they, 66 88 to 66 yeah. yeah was it yeah he he had mentioned that to me too and so i was like man that's you know i knew there had been some higher scoring games but this has been one of those ones that hadn't seen in quite some time. And, you know, Fountain Lake, I think, is definitely, especially coming up from the eight-man ranks, and had a had a rough season in eight-man last year. And Coach Richardson's done a good job in his in his first year there coming over from Ashdown. Yeah. But Boxite, I, I expected them to have a little rust, at least on one side of the ball, just because not only were they coming off of a bye, but they had so many – like starters mm -hmm. and key contributors out. So we're actually going to do the 1037, the buzz game of the week is Arkadelphia and Boxite in Arkadelphia. Really excited to see that 4A7 matchup. But I'll tell you, man, uh, Boxite, I know that they probably slept for the entire weekend. That's a lot yeah. of energy on one game. Yeah. And Mina went 12 and three under Tim Harper in 2014. They lost to Warren uh, right there at the end. They, they, they were in the 7 4A at the time. It was, you know, a tough ride, but they went 12 and three their best season since. So uh, I did talk to coach Matt Richardson and, you know, I got some numbers 
Quarterback Cooper Bus was 44 of 68 for 481 yards and seven touchdowns, four two-point conversions. He had 20 carries for 73 yards for two touchdowns and had three two-point conversions rushing. So nine total touchdowns for Cooper Bus. Peyton Harwood had 22 catches for 241 yards, four touchdowns, caught two of those two-point conversions. Case Hare, 11 catches, 177 yards, two touchdowns, and a two-point conversion. So what does that look like overall? You talk about the Fountain Lake-Nashville game that was 88-66. That's the highest scoring game combined in the history of Arkansas high school football. This game had 150 total points. That's fourth all-time individual records that were set or you know you're in the record book now cooper bus his passing touchdowns ties for 10th all time his completions 44 is third all time in arkansas uh attempts 68 is fifth all time and individual receptions peyton harwood 22 that's third all time in arkansas i remember slade kent has slayed something i forget slade camp slade camp i want to say camp had over 20 catches in that Stuttgart win over uh, win back in 01. So yeah, the late great. Thing. If I can, I'll butt in real quick. The late great Don Campbell, of course, that you know was the coach for Win that time, and he coached Slade in the All Star game, and he yeah. told him like that summer. He said, "Look, you're not allowed to catch any more passes. I've already seen plenty from you." So funny <laughs> little right. story. That was Angela the, Williams running and yeah, uh, huge game for that was one of the best high school football championship games I've ever seen. So. I was excited to see that, uh, you know, and kudos to Fountain Lake, man. You, we thought that this might not be much of a game considering you're coming up from eight-man box heights healthy now. Uh, but when you go up and put 72 on the board, that, that's a huge, huge night for the Cobra. So they're, they're going to be tough going forward. And saying that 7-4-A, Arkadelphia rolls, you know, they're over 40 points a game now. Uh, you you got to give to Coach Shucker in that offense. He's a really good offensive mind. But the defense is playing stout. So, box out won't be able to do that on Friday night. I, I can guarantee you that. Uh, Lamar plays Mina on Friday. That 4-4-A, uh, Mina looks to be in control now after that 33-14 to win over Pottsville on Friday night. Uh, Clinton, like you said, combined 356 yards uh, from Jones uh, and his backfield mate. Monticello at Warren is an intriguing game. Warren dispatched of DeWitt on Friday night by 14 points, but Monticello playing good football right now. Um, and, you know, 1-4-A, Elkins is still rolling. It's just a matter of, you know, South Arkansas team's got a lot of attention on them right now. Uh, and we talked to Coach Nathan Couch from Southside Batesville on Friday, and, was, you know, they're just glad to get out of it. 10-7 to over Pocahontas. Pocahontas has had some close games this year. They lost to Salem early on, and then they've just been right there. Uh, Coach Chester, the Redskins, they, they could be trouble coming into the season if they put it all together. And that was what I was going to go before we head on down. I was just now that we're at the midway point of the season, you know, before the year, it was war, the typical ones, Warren yeah. and Arkadelphia, Ozark was in that mix. And just looking through the conferences here. So 4 one yeah, Elkins until somebody says any different. Region two is interesting because, yes, Mills right now, they're, they seem to be the favorite. But what will, will Lone Oak? Will they build off of that steam? Yeah. Will Forest City pick things up in the back half of the season? That's ones that I'm looking for. I, I still like Southside uh, to come out in the, the Region 3. Region 4, just like last year, even though it looks different, it's still crazy. And I think that's going to be – I don't know that it's going to have quite the madness that last year did. Yeah. But when you think about Mina, when you think about Clinton, I'm also – when you when you've got – um, a guy like Creed Vega with Dardnell, I'm interested with them. Pottsville, I think, is certainly still in the mix. Then you go to Region 7, and Malvern's undefeated in the second stint under John Fogelman, and then you've got that crucial showdown in Clark County between Boxville and Arkadelphia. But other than Region 4, Region 8, and this is not one that we expected, but Region 8, I think, and kind of like with Region 1, Warren has ran that for really the past few years, but and, and they've they're going to be the favorite again until somebody knocks them off. But I, I still with Star City and Helena, I know they haven't really had a lot of big time push, but they're undefeated. Monticello and Hamburg are looking pretty good. Monticello came out on top in that three point victory over Hamburg, and I'm still not ready to quite sleep on Stuttgart and Dewitt yet. Dewitt has. Uh, a great running back and Corey Graham. And then, of course, and then Stuttgart, they they can score some points um, with Kane Price there at quarterback. So 
to me, other than Region 4, I think Region 8 down in southeast Arkansas, who knows, Warren – We'll probably, you know, Bo Hembry, I know that he uh, he does a great job of motivating his guys, so maybe they'll see this and that'll really turn it up. But yeah. I, I still like them as the favorite, the, the Lumberjacks for sure. But I feel like Region 8, just from the looks on paper, has a possibility of being just about as crazy as Region 4. Well, who knows, though? Yeah, and, you know, Class 4A, they get five playoff representatives from each school. Okay, so there's 30 schools that make it and then two teams get a bye. The, the playoff brackets did come out last week. The AAA did see it, uh, release them. So I haven't looked to see who has the buys yet, but they're, you know, you're going to have some uh, two, two winners get buys. Then you'll have a lot of three, five, two, four matchups that are going to be taking place. So uh, it's always interesting to see the third place teams from certain conferences, how they match up with others. But look at it right now. And I mentioned this on the scoreboard show on Friday night. You know, you got Star City, you got DeWitt, Hamburg, Monticello. Uh, along with Warren right now, and might be leaving out somebody right there. They're all playing good football, and they're all, you know, beating up on each other. It might be one of those cases like it was last year in the 4-4A where you had uh, a sixth team that gets left out that could probably beat a second-place team from, let's say, the 1-4A. Not saying that's the case, but it's a, a great possibility. So a lot of good, even matchups down there, and it's the way it should be in southeast Arkansas. I, I go back to the – the 97 AAA Southeast Conference when you had Warren, Watson Chapel, uh, Hamburg had just made a state uh, playoff run and got to the finals and lost to Alma – or they lost to Alma that year. Hamburg did. So, uh, a lot of good football in Southeast Arkansas the way it should be. Then on down to Class 3A, these next two classes, just with – the lower classifications having more teams really other than 2A, as we'll kind of do a roundtable discussion after we go through some scores, just sort of what we did right there for a midseason update. And and the Class 3A score start, Boonville 49 to nothing over Cedarville. Charleston 36 to 14 over West Fork. And Mayflower, possibly the quietest 4-0 team in Class 3A. They blank Mountain View 42 to nothing. Walnut Ridge also pitches a shutout, 38 to nothing over Manila. Rivercrest. 40 to 14 over Harrisburg, Osceola 44 to 7 over Hoxie, Newport 56 to 18 over Piggott, and then Salem 36 to 3 over Melbourne. Jesseville comes out on top, and what I have gathered was a bit of a controversial ending over Mountain over Magnet Cove, 37 yeah. to 30. Yeah, we'll we'll talk a little bit about that one. Prescott 43 to 8 over Falk in the battle of undefeated teams. Center Point uh, is there. Are they four and zero or three and one? They're three they're doing one, well. Maybe. Three and one, uh, forty six to eighteen over Horatio. Then Bismarck, who is just really off to a banger of a start, fifty five to eight over Parker's Chapel. Fordyce forty two to six over Barton. Then Ryzen twenty four to zero over Palestine Wheatley. Also Dumas, they snapped their losing skid in a twenty eight to six win over Lakeside Lake Village. We'll go real quick back to uh, Jesseville. So Kevin, from what I had gathered. Uh, there was a question about the spot. Uh, and really, with the final seconds left, it looked like, of course, depending on who you ask, I haven't seen video or anything, but um, it was a toss on Magnet Cove. Ma Magnet Cove does a toss play, thinking they scored. Uh, that, that didn't happen. I I'll let you explain, because that's really about all I remember. Yeah, so there was a question on the spot of the ball. And with time running down, things can happen. The clock does not stop unless – it's a first down and then or stoppage of clock by an official. So the officials had come together and did not make a decision on if it was a touchdown or if it was short right away. And as the clock keeps running down, time keeps running off. They need to get a decision. They spot the ball. There wasn't enough time to run a play. They didn't get it off. Time expires. Ball game, Jesseville. Now, that's Jesseville's third come from behind win which puts them in good position moving forward. They're playing with fire. They're coming out on the good side of it right now. In my opinion, as an official that has worked hot, yeah, I've worked some good games. I've, you know, called in state championship games. What should have happened at that point is, and the AAA may come out and make a ruling on this, but this is my opinion, okay? I just want to say that, state that. If there was a question about it, they should have come, the officials should have come together as a group Stop the clock. Once the ball was set, 
the white hat would have started the clock at that point. Now, it would have upset Jesseville, but in terms of making sure to get the right call, and my dad has always said this, I don't care how long it how long it takes us, we're going to get the call right. We can go, we can deal with stuff from there. So that's what happened. That's what we were told. That's what I interpret everything that that happened. But they should have stopped it, placed the spot, then restart, then go. It may have been one or two seconds left, but that's just the way it is. And, and apologies to Kerry Rogers and the Center Point Knights. They are four zero right now with that win over Horatio. Their best win so far is a 38-24 win over Fountain Lake. Uh, that looks a lot better right now for the night. So, you know, Class 3A Bismarck at Smackover this week. Uh, that's a huge game. Smackover got beat 50-42 to by Harmony Grove, Washita County on Friday night. So, how Smackover, you know, comes back. We talked to our man Dylan Ward. Uh, he said that, uh, which we already knew, Mitchell Polk was the real deal. But, you know, Harmony Grove had a really good night rushing the football. Uh, quarterback play has been really good for them. And then you got Rivercrest and Newport. Man, it's the 3-3-A is everything we thought it would be and more. But I think, you know, when you talk about Prescott, talk about Boonville, Newport is that third team right now. Uh, and I made this statement yesterday. Look, Rivercrest has Cavante Washington, and he's had games where he's had six touchdowns, five, six, seven, doesn't matter. He has some weapons. But Newport just has more. They've got four or five Cavante Washingtons out there, and I think that's the difference. Plus, the game is at Newport on Friday night. Could be a big win that propels Newport even even further into that state title conversation. Like you said, Region Three, it's it's lived up to the hype with Newport at five and zero, Rivercrest and Walnut Ridge at four and zero. Region One, yes, it's still Boonville. I think Charleston is a dark horse, and I say yeah. dark horse because they're playing record. good football. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It, yeah. Very. And as we talked about last week, a very uh, misleading record. Region Two is is really interesting because you've got Mayflower at four and zero. Not really sure what you have in Atkins now. Personally, I still like Salem uh, probably okay. in, as the favorite, yeah. just because again, two and two record. Their losses are to Prescott and Newport. Um, when we just talked about region they three, okay. Melbourne. yeah, they yeah, thumped yeah, Melbourne, thumped right Melbourne big time. And I'm going to go on a limb here. I'm going to give a hot take for region four. Now, Jesseville, like you said, they've had those come from behind wins. They're playing some good football. Perryville is also three and one. I'm going to say Glenn Rose at one and three. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and predict that Glenn Rose has a strong back half of the season and Glenn Rose win. They get the one seat. I'm going to say that here on September 30th, as we head into to week, what is it, week five now? Uh, yeah. uh, I'm going to say that Glen Rose comes out on top in this Region 4, Region 7. All respect to what Center Point is doing, but I think – I just don't know that they have quite what – I'm not – I don't know that they have quite what Bismarck and especially Prescott has. Could prove me wrong. Kevin, I don't know if there's a team in 3A over the past – really since 2020 who's proved people wrong like Center Point has. They had the upset over Charleston three or so years ago. So – they played spoiler quite a bit. So definitely keeping an eye on the Knights and definitely respect what they are doing. Region 8, four dice is 4-0. So is Rising. That week nine game, that's looking pretty nice right about now. I, I look at both of those schedules, and as long as they handle their business, I do feel like that both should be undefeated when they go into that week nine matchup. So we'll see what happens there. But my biggest hot take out of 3A, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to predict whether it happens or not, Glen Rose is going to be at the top of Region Four by the end of Week Ten. I don't think that's too too big of a take, right there. You know, they got their win over Two Rivers, which was huge. Perryville, Cutter Morningstar, just not adapting to eleven man football yet. Um, Perryville won that game forty five nothing. Like you said, Jesseville, Magnet Cove, they're about the same team, honestly, in terms of you know what the product they put on the field. It's been really good so far. Uh, Magnet Cove's just come out on the bad end of a couple of games. They're two and two. Uh, but, yeah, Glen Rose, the more those young guys play, the better they're going to be. Yes, they took it on the chin against Boxite 42 or nothing. Yeah, they took it on the chin against Bismarck. But it's just going to be one of those situations to where they keep going, keep going. They're going to be okay. I agree with that. And last but not least in 2A, Bigelow finally gets over the hump, gets their first win, 45-12 to over Magazine. Conway Christian blanks Mountainburg, 44 to nothing. East Poinsett County, big over Izzard County, consolidated 56-6. to Desark rebounds. 
from its loss to Carlisle, 44 to eight over Earl. Mark Treek shuts out Mariana Lee, 22 to nothing. McCrory, how about those Jaguars? They are 4 0 after beating Cross County, 26 to 14. Junction City, 49 to six over Foreman. Murfreesboro, 22 to seven over Gurdon. Mineral Springs, 56 to 20 over Spring Hill. And then in the 2A4, you mentioned earlier, Hampton comes out on top, six to nothing over Clarendon. Hazen squeaks past Bearden, 14 to 12. And then Carlisle, in the game that we talked a good bit about last week, big time over Baptist Ooh. Prep, 56 to seven. Ty Tanksley, eight for 12, 203 yards, three touchdowns. Jaden Elliott with another huge game, 136 yards and two scores on 11 carries. And Kevin, as far as just a, a roundtable discussion on this, and it's I, the smaller classifications in just about every sport kind of get like this. And even in the bigger sports where there's not basically the comp, they're the classes where there isn't as many teams, you start to kind of get to where you run out of things to say. Now, yeah. I think that other than Carlisle being the top dog, and really it's not, I still right now would probably say it's not close just with how consistent they're playing, uh, how well coached they are. But this week, so in the 2A2, you've got McCrory at EPC. I think that that's going to maybe tell kind of some things as far as the back end of those playoff spots. But really yeah. the game of the week in 2A, Junction City at Mineral Springs. You've got a case of two two and two teams that, by all accounts, excluding Carlisle, were probably people's favorite for the state title going into this season. Yeah. Things didn't start off as well for uh, Junction City, Mineral Springs, who both played tough non-conference schedules. This could be the game right here for either one of those where you get that momentum, you win that game, and then you propel yourself towards possibly getting that number one seed out of the 2A3. That's exactly right. So, you know, Mineral Springs, back-to-back -back weeks, over 50 points. They beat Quitman two weeks ago, 54-49. JV on Fricks is having a phenomenal season once again. He's one of those guys averaging 14, 15 yards a carry, and they put it to Spring Hill, you know, the other night. One, you know, Murfreesboro and Gurdon, that game was a little closer. I know it was, you know, sloppy down there. They Murfreesboro pulled that one out 22 to nine. Uh, Hazen, good win uh, for Coach Joe Bissankin, uh 14 12 in overtime. You know, take it what you can get. Poe and Indians rolling their three and one. That may be Carlisle's next game that they have to worry about. But, yeah, I don't think it's going to be much, but uh, like you said, Carl's just playing well. The game really kind of intrigued me, Mount Ida and Conway Christian this week. Okay, so, yeah, Conway Christian and Bigelow have been the two teams in that conference, and they've developed a little bit of a rivalry as of late. But Mount Ida could maybe cause some problems for Conway Christian, but I don't see him coming out of that, and, you know. But just look, as you mentioned, Kyle, you know, Carlisle, what they did to Desert two weeks ago, at, you know, and thumping them the way they did it was 36 to six or something like that. And Desert beats Earl 44 to eight. That just shows you how far between the top teams in the state are versus the other guys. You know, you got four teams right now, in my opinion. You got Carlisle, Middle Springs, Junction City, and Conway Christian. Those are your top four. After that, who knows? We'll we'll figure it out, and they'll figure out the twos and the threes coming in the next few weeks. So, uh, Baptist Prep's going to have to rebound. Look, it's it's a fun offense to play in, but when you run up against somebody that just can play all three phases of the game at a high level, you just sh it shuts you down. And it's not the fact that Carlisle won. We knew Carlisle was probably going to win this game. The fact that they beat them by forty nine points says a lot. You know, Gary Wilson and his club wanted to come out and make a statement. Look, yeah, it's fun. You're doing this. But the Junction City win wasn't a fluke. We're the top team. We're the top dog right now. And now everybody's got to chase us. So um, it, that was that was a statement win by Coach Gary Wilson and the Carlisle Bison. Yeah, I think that's my thing with, with Carlisle right now is, I mean, I, as we said, their opener against Drew Central. Yeah, Drew Central's down. But – Kevin, they've just, I mean, they're just so well coached. I mean, they just do everything with that they're supposed to do. Gary Wilson, you know, it's his second year as head coach, and he was on staff previously under Caleb Shock when they made that rebound from 2021 from what was it, one win to going yeah. to the state final. He, I mean, he's really uh, been impressive. And I know that, you know, he's going to be the first one to uh, credit his staff as he, as he should, to credit the community. But uh, he has really made his way up the coaching ranks in just two years, not even two years just yet. So 
Don't forget, we've got volleyball coverage now on Natural State Sports. You can check that out every Monday. We've got the top performers from the week before, as well as the top 25 rankings for all classifications. That's how Jeff Halpern does it. He does it regardless of uh, – we've even got, I think, number – a top five. I know Hackett's a three A team and is in the top five right now. So six A down to two A. Um, that's how we rank them right there. It's a lot of fun. So go check out where where your team is this week, and then also see who performed the best last week. And Kevin, where are you and uh, Randy going to be for the Sonic Blast this week? Dardale headed up to okay. the Lizard Dardale? Country. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. We'll get to talk to Coach Phil Vega on Friday night, and when uh, we'll have a couple of guys on with us. Uh, Creed Vega and Latravius Robinson looks like are going to be out there talking with us. One from offense, one from defense. Court Creed had a really good game the other night. Uh, once again, I think he had 235 yards, four touchdowns through the air as uh, Darnell rolled on. So a lot to look forward to in that 4-4A, and we're glad we get to be there on Friday night in Darnell. Yeah, so you can catch Rand, you can catch Randy Rainwater, Kevin, as well as Barry Grooms of Hootons, Arkansas football starting at 4 p.m., Myself, RJ Hawk, and Josh Neighbors will take over at 645 for our pregame as we will be down at Arkadelphia for the game against Boxside. And then you can catch Kevin, Barry, and Randy again as they will take you into Saturday morning, catching up on all the score, literally Saturday morning, yeah. uh, catching up on all the scores around the state as well as talking with some head coaches. But that will do it for episode 32 of Arkansas Preps Weekly. Again, be sure and check out all of our content at naturalstatesports.com as well as Facebook and Twitter slash X. For all of us here at Natural State Sports, my name is Kyle Sutherland. We will catch you next week.